to believe. I wanted to believe there was a time before the killing started. That there was a moment when he could have stopped. He could have stopped and so many people could have been saved. I wanted to believe. But that's assuming he was something else. Before he became a monster. That he was someone else. Before he became Ted Bundy. Out of the car, sir. I'm not going to ask you twice. You know who I am. Hello? Is this Anne Rule? Yeah. Oh, what time is it? Pensacola Police Department. We have someone here who'd like to speak to you. Ann. Ann there? Yeah, I'm here. It's me. Ted. <laughs> yeah, well, I have to tell you, that doesn't sound like an emergency, honey. It sounds like the flu. Well, it's making me really depressed. Well, the flu gives me the blues, too. Uh, can you hold on a second? Crisis clinic. Who am I talking to? Yeah, hang on one second, please. Lying to okay. Hi. Crisis hey. Center. I think I'm yes, in a little bit of trouble. I just wanted to sleep. sleep. I took something, but I still don't know really care. Yeah, I understand. It doesn't really matter. Well, sure it does. Bye. I think it matters. My name's Ted. What's yours? Sally. Well, hey, I love that name. I, I have a cousin named Sally. Oh, you're lying. No, 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 no lie. She was the original Long Tall Sally. Cross my heart. And hope to die. No, no, Sally, no one is dying tonight, okay? Uh, look, I need you to, I need you to tell me what you Staff took. Hi, this is the My boyfriend's gone. He lied to me. To yeah, well, you know, hey, Sally, I, not two hours ago, I went round and round with my girlfriend. She dumped me. You know, so I know how you feel. I'm still holding. Yeah? Well, you want to see a movie? That's it. That's it, Sally. You have to, you, we just have to move on, don't we? Now tell me, tell me what you took. Can you, can you just do that? Can you tell me what you took? Sally? 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 We've dispatched a unit to seven. Sally, can you hear me? Okay, they got a trace. Paramedics are on the way. Well, I'm not sure she's gonna make it, Ann. Sally, listen to me. Can you hear me? This is Ted. This is your friend Ted. Sally, look, you promised me a movie. We can go see a we can see a matinee at the Neptune. Sally? Do you hear that? 
Sally, stay awake now. I don't, I don't want you to go to sleep. There are people coming. They're going to help you. Can you, Sally, can you hear me? Friend, Sally. Kiss. Female, approximately 30 years old, faint radio pulse, BP 80 over 50. Hey, you guys still on? Yeah, yeah, we're here. She'll be okay. We're going to transport to the hospital. Good save. <laughs> <laughs> These were great. Oh, you read them all? Well, yeah. How many published authors can I count as a friend? Of course I read them all. <laughs> it's not exactly Shakespeare, but it puts food on the table if I throw in enough adjectives. You write like Truman Capote if he'd been a cop. <laughs> Do you miss it? Being a cop? Yeah. I mean, I'll always miss it. I, I get my fix doing this now. <laughs> Did I say something funny? Well, yeah. I mean, you used to be a cop. You write crime fiction. You work on a suicide prevention hotline. I'd say you have a pretty healthy taste for the macabre. <laughs> it's true. You know, every time a siren goes by, my heart rate jumps. You too? I think it's karma we met. You know, I better go. Leslie uh, is going to wake up soon. I thought your ex-husband had her weekends. So did I. <laughs> so did she. Ted, when you talked about Victoria on the phone, was it true? Well... It wasn't much of a fight. She broke up with me. I stood there. I thought it was going well. That's because you were listening to me, and I had no idea what the hell was going on. I'm sorry. Victoria's always been out of my league. Don't you go changing for anybody. Oh, we'll meet again. I'll make something of myself. I don't doubt it. Hey, I'll see you Tuesday. Okay. Okay, bye. The girl's name was Kay Munson, 15 years old. I told her friend she was running away to Oregon. Man driving a truck picks her up. How long ago was that? Two weeks. Two days ago, her body was found on a riverbank near Olympia, badly decomposed. You check all the bars and liquor stores off the interstate? In progress. Guys like these usually need to get drunk. You'll do the usual, look at the follow reports, the autopsy findings, write up a narrative for the DA. Mm hmm And no magazine pieces till the case goes cold. Or until we nail a son of a bitch. Give me a little credit, will you? <laughs> I give you the credit you deserve. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta do something about this goddamn hitchhiking. Kids stick out their thumb and get in the car with anybody. Open season for psychopaths. Mom. I'm gonna go with Audrey to Samantha's house. Will there be boys there? Yeah, and lots of drugs. It's gonna be an orgy. <laughs> Sounds like fun. Be home by 10. How old was she? Who? The girl who got killed. How do you know someone got killed? Uh, you close the drawer, Mom. I heard you talking on the phone with Dick. I'm not an idiot. You know, you should go have fun. This isn't anything you should think about. This isn't anything I want to think about. Doesn't it bother you? Yes. God, yes, it bothers me. Well, then why do it? I don't know, baby. I mean, I come from a family of cops. I was a cop. Yeah, well, you're not a cop anymore. <laughs> Once a cop, always a cop. You're weird, Mom. Leslie. Yeah. Remember what you promised? No hitchhiking. Mm -hmm, but what if he's really cute? <laughs> she was 15. I'm sorry, Mom. Be safe. I love you. I love you too. Go have fun. Thanks. Bye. Bye. In the flesh. Well, I mean, what is this thing? Your message was kind of vague. Oh, it's a fundraiser. I arranged it. What do you think? <laughs> I think you've changed. I mean, look at you. You look like a... Um... A Republican? You can say it. It's not a dirty word. <laughs> Ted, Governor. Yes, can I speak to you in a few minutes, please? Well, yes, sir, of course. Uh, Governor, I'd like you to meet Ann Rule. She's a, she's a writer. Nice to meet writer. you. Hi, Ann. Nice to meet you. Ted. Yes, sir. Right away. Was the governor? Yes, it was. How did this happen so fast? Well, I, I volunteered for the re-election committee, and then the governor needed a driver, so I got the job. You know, he got to like me. And... <laughs> Rachel Alger, love you. Hey. Oh, this is perfect. You're the only two people here who know me. Anne Rule, this is Margot. Margot, meet Anne. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. Well, honey, I 
Thought you forgot about me. How can I forget about you, huh? Mm. I'll be back. That's great. Oh, here's Ted. I'm a big fan. So uh, you're you Ted's want? famous nice and rule. <laughs> Please. No, really, Ted. He, he talks about you all the time. He reads and rereads your stories. You're like uh, some kind of touchstone for him. I've never seen him so happy. <gasps> really? Wow, you know, that's really nice to hear. <laughs> We're talking about getting married. Oh, congratulations, Morgan. Thanks. It's hard to believe how much he's changed. Hello? We've got more missing girls, Anne. How many? Six. All college age, all attractive. And five of them simply vanished from their campuses. I heard about a couple of these, but when did this escalate? Oh, it's been like clockwork. One a month. And we've been trying to keep it low profile, but we just can't keep a lid on it anymore. Any more bodies? One girl. There was blood in her bed, blood in her nightgown, but her bed was made and her nightgown was hung up in the closet. A neat freak. Or he was trying to delay the discovery of his crime. Or assuming she's dead. No. Jogger found her body last week. Next. Another girl was found in her bed, beaten and raped with a metal rod. God. She's been in a coma for a week. But the doctors say she's going to recover. Can she ID the rapist? She was unconscious when it happened. You ever see anything like this? If it's the same killer, except for Albert DeSalvo, no, I don't think there's ever been anything quite like this. Well, great. We've got our own Boston Strangler. So what do you want to do today? I, I need to do some work at the library. But it's Saturday. I know. I'm sorry. It's okay, isn't it, if we don't spend the day together? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I guess. Okay. Can I have you tonight? Of course. I promise. Excuse me. Hi, how are you? Fine. Listen, I was wondering if you could help me. I've got a dead battery up here. I have cables, but I don't know anyone that lives nearby. Yeah. Well, if it's an inconvenience, I mean, I can get somebody Where's else to help. Where's your car? It's just up ahead. My name's Ted. What's yours? Katie. Katie. Well, I love that name. I got a niece named Katie. This is, uh, this is me, right here. Yeah, it died on me last night. It's been here ever since. So you slept in the car last night? Oh, <laughs> no. No, I, I, uh... I have a friend who lives a few blocks from here. But you said you didn't know anybody around here. You want me to wait here while you get your car? Yeah, do that. This is it, just up here, so uh, can you help me? <sighs> sure, I'll, I'll bring my car out. Yeah? Yeah. Thank you. Sailing accident. Stupid. I've never been sailing. Is it fun? Oh, yeah. It's great fun. Never been sailing. Maybe you should try it sometime. My granddad used to sail on a tall ship. You know what a tall ship is? Uh, no, actually, I don't. Square rig masts and everything? Hey. hey! You haven't eaten, have you? I. I'm starving. Are you hungry? Yeah, yeah, I could eat some. Corkscrew. These are beautiful. Did you get a lot done today? I'm sorry? I said, um, well, did you have a good day? Yeah, I had a great day. Dance with me. 
Hmm. So what are we celebrating? Just being alive. Seattle police are baffled as to how a young woman at downtown's popular East Lake Racket Center could vanish without a trace in broad daylight. The latest victim brings the total of missing women. Have you been following what's going on? I mean, do you watch the news? Do you talk to your friends about this? No, we're all featherheads. We just yammer about who's got the biggest butt at school. I will drive you. When? Later. I am going to be on the bus, Mother. Look, you have to wait for a bus. You have to get off of a bus. Okay, what? Well, I'm not going downtown to play tennis. I'm going to see Dad. I'd be driving you right now if you didn't me notice, but you didn't, so you wait. Well, what am I supposed to do? Just sit in my room? Dad's waiting for me. Calm down, will you? I mean, call him. I, you know, have him pick you up. I'm fine with that. Uh, bad timing? Jackie Ripper's roaming the highways, and my daughter's insisting on going out alone. Oh, man, I hardly think it's that bad. Thank you, Ted. See? Though your mother does know something about the criminal element. Yeah, lucky me. Detective mom. I'm gonna go call dad. Stay, have lunch with us. You want coffee? Uh, yeah. You know those girls are probably hanging out in a cult somewhere getting stoned. Those girls are dead and buried. I brought candy. Oh, thanks. What happened to your hand? Oh, I sliced it on a knife the other night. It bled all over my dinner. One of those girls went to uh, Leslie's school. Kidding, which one? Renee Singleton graduated two years ahead of her. Huh. Wow. You know, I, I didn't mean to uh, make light of your fears. Leslie does fit the type. She has long, straight hair. Pretty, intelligent, slender. You've done your homework. Well, I'm consulting with the task force, writing up a narrative for the DA's office. Task force? Well, that sounds like a big deal. Well, eight girls are dead. It couldn't be a bigger deal. Well, I don't know. Could be 10 or 20. I mean, it would be a bigger deal with each, each murder, wouldn't it? Or does it become routine? You're joking? No, no, I, I'm Try sorry. joking. You, you have a daughter in the killer's bullseye. Try joking. Oh, nothing's gonna happen to Leslie. It could happen to any young girl, anytime, anywhere. Anne, listen to me. I'm telling you, nothing will happen to Leslie. Normally this place is packed. Now everyone's avoiding it like the plague. Good. Might save a few lives. You know, at least a dozen women came forward saying some guy approached them. You know, you don't have to be here. I can walk a crime scene by myself. Well, I need a fresh point of view. Oh. So, he tried to pick up more girls than the two who are missing. Uh-huh. And they just got right into his car. They say he's a good-looking guy, a real charmer. The place was packed, broad daylight. <laughs> Any boulder, he'd have to wear a sign. Yeah, he used the same name with everyone he talked to, but it can't be his real name, Ted. No, that'd be too much to hope for. Uh, well, I was tweaking the article for the next issue. And uh, how many words in your articles? Um, about 5,000, why? 5,000, may I? Sure, but only one, they're for Leslie and her friends. Oh. Okay, 5,000. How would you like to try writing something, say, 30 times that amount? You're kidding. I'm an agent. I don't have a sense of humor. Well, you know I'd like to write a book. I mean, you know that. But I don't think I have a subject that's going to fill 400 pages. Man, your subject is all over your office. You've been covering the missing girl since day one. Yeah, but I don't think that story has a notoriety a no-name writer needs to sell a book. Mm. No, no. And I hope it never does. Huh? Norton thinks it could be the biggest crime story to hit the West Coast since the Donner Party. Yeah, but they'd never sign off on me. Well, they already have. Joe. Okay, there's a couple of catches. The advance is small. Teeny tiny, it's 1,500 bucks. We might as well be a million. And they'll only publish if there's an arrest and conviction. So, what do you say? Have a cookie. Have two. Talk about killing two birds with one stone. Help us catch a killer and get rich. You think I'm only doing this to get rich? And it was a joke. I hope both things happen. What's with the VWs? 
That's our guy when he was at the racket club. He drove a V-dub. I have a friend. His name's Ted. He drives a VW. And he looks a little like the police sketch. So what's your friend Ted do? Uh, he's on Governor Evans' staff. I met him when I worked the suicide hotline. Is he a good guy? He's a great guy. But these... These are a lot of coincidences. And there are hundreds of men with the name Ted who drive a VW within a hundred mile radius. But they don't all resemble the sketch. Is he on the list? Wait a minute. We agreed that the killer wouldn't use his real name, right? Right. So, right off the bat, we know it's highly unlikely that his name is Ted. Right. I'd like to see the list, please. What's your friend's last name? Bundy. To the most successful true crime writer since Truman Capote. <laughs> Let me finish the first book. Hi. Hey. Hi. Yep. Hi. Uh, Anne Rule. I'm Hi. sorry, I keep forgetting you guys don't know each other. Anne, this is Kelly Parker. We work together. Well, you deserve a toast today. Ted was just accepted at law school in Utah. Congratulations. What about Margo? I thought you guys were going to get married. Oh, her, her family's from Utah. She'll visit. It's really, it's kind of perfect if you think about it. Well, and um, Ted was telling me about your book. That's that's great. Great opportunity, tragic subject. It's only the greatest murder spree since Jack the Ripper. You have to document it. I'd rather catch who's doing it. You have any theories on who this guy is? He's someone women don't feel threatened by, but who's probably threatened by them. He's college educated. Yeah, he's smart. I, I... I didn't say that. A diploma does not a genius make. He hasn't left a shred of evidence. The bodies are evidence. And there are dozens of people ready to identify him. If the cops ever catch him, the guy's evaded detection for months. The task force is going down the list. Well, it's a big list. Even I'm on it. <laughs> you and a thousand others. <laughs> is that true? Yeah. Look, the cops even talk to me. My name's Ted. I drive a red VW. You're a suspect. He's a person of interest. I am an interesting person. <laughs> Hell, I should be the number one suspect. Then why don't you come down and then take a lie detector test, then? Oh, you guys. <laughs> Come on, Ted. Anne's going to think you're serious. Oh, nonsense. We're just two old friends goofing around, right, Ann? How's your hand, Ted? It's fine. Healed up perfectly. Not even a scar. Excuse me, miss. Did you park on Lock Street? Yes, why? Ah, well, we've had several uh, break-ins. What, what kind of car do you drive? A Mustang. Oh, geez, a Mustang was one of the cars that was broken into. Oh, you're kidding. Yes, yes, I'm sorry about this. It happens a lot these days. We've had three break-ins the last week alone. So you're a police officer? Uh, yeah. We don't, we don't have to hurry. I mean, okay. it's not like they're making a getaway or anything. Uh, did you leave your car unlocked? Yeah, I always do. Stupid, huh? No, no, I, I think it's sweet, you know. It shows you're trusting. It's kind of refreshing. You know, you don't look like a cop to me. Well, that's because I'm undercover. So I guess I should ask you for some ID? Well, I should have done that from the top. Officer Roseland. Okay, there's my car. Ah. Just stop leaving my doors unlocked. Oh, I don't know what the world's coming to when people can't leave their doors unlocked. Nice car. I don't see anything missing. Well, we'll have to go down to the station anyway and, and fill out a report. I didn't see anything. It's procedure, really. It'll just take five minutes. It's just down on State Street. We'll take my car. That's your car? Yeah. Do me a favor. When we get to the station, will you not tell anyone that I forgot to identify myself? That's the kind of thing, you know, you can get suspended for. And I can't afford for that to happen. My wife is due in two weeks. It's our first. I'm hoping to have a girl. No, oh, too many names. Too many names. What's your name? Julie. Julie? No kidding, that's on our list. Oh. No, no, no lie. I have a cousin named Julie. It's a great name. You in school? I work for the phone company. Hey. I think you're going the wrong way. Can I ask you a personal question? The Julie? police station is on State Street, and it's, it's, you passed it. How often does your boyfriend tell you you're beautiful? My 
boyfriend? Stop the car. Stop the car. Stop the car! What are you doing? I have a dead battery out here. I was wondering if you could help me with jumper cables. Sorry, no. My boyfriend's waiting for me. Well, it would just... I'm really late. It would just take a minute. you have jumper cables. What kind of idiot doesn't have jumper cables? You're looking at them. Hey, Mom. Honey, I got some bad news for you. It's about Renee Singleton. I'm sorry, baby. I'm just so sorry. Where did they find her? Near Cougar Mountain with three other girls. They found four bodies all at once. Who would do this? I don't know, baby. I don't know. I'm sorry, officer. I was just. Uh, you see your license and registration. You having car trouble? Oh, no. No. I just. Uh, I must have taken a wrong turn somewhere, so I stopped to get my bearings. Uh huh. And, um. What were you doing this evening? I was on my way home. I had seen a film at the Redwood. I saw Towering in Inferno. Mind if I have a look in your car, Mr. Bundy?
days ago, I was really scared. Just look at him, Julie. Watch his face. How he moves. Take your time. Wait. That's him. I can see it now. You're sure? Yes, I'm sure. Ted, you want to tell us why you got burglary tools in the back of your car? I am not a burglar. Those are just things I keep around the house. A mask, a crowbar, handcuffs. Either you're robbing houses or you're a, you're a sex freak. Which is it? I am in law. I am a law student, and I know the law. It's not a crime to have that stuff. Mm -hmm. What were you doing when Officer Floyd found you? I told Officer Floyd. I told you. I'd seen the towering inferno with the redwood. I got lost on the way home. I stopped to get my bearings. Ted? Yeah? Towering inferno wasn't playing at the redwood. We checked you for priors with the Seattle police. They sent us something interesting. We know about the dead and missing girls in Washington and Oregon. You want to explain those? No. Do you? And now we got three missing girls here in Utah. Lori Nussbaum, Susan Wayne, Joan Raymond. Look at their pictures, Ted. Look at them. He is the governor of the state of Washington. I used to be his personal aide. I'd rather ask Julie Wyatt. And who is she? She's the woman you tried to kidnap. She had handcuffs on. We found keys in your car, and guess what? They fit the cuffs. This is sick. These accusations against me. No, you know what's sick, Ted? The night you failed to grab Julie Wyatt, you still had to get your fix, and you went after another girl, Susan Wayne. The same night, Ted. That's sick. Not this. You. Make the adjustment and move on. He was in my home. He knows my daughter, you know? I mean, he was, he was sitting right there where you're sitting. I see him in every room. Mom, I'll get it. No, it's OK, honey. I'm here. Hello? Yeah, it's me, Ted. It's nationwide. You're infamous. Well, they have blown this thing all out of proportion. I mean, Anne, they think I killed all these young girls, and I, you know me. I would never, I, I wouldn't hurt a fly. And this, this attempted kidnapping charge, I mean, the woman who ID'd me, she made a mistake, Anne. She, she said my eyes were blue. They're not. They're hazel. I mean, obviously, obviously the police pressured her. And it was an illegal search of my car. There's no question. Ann? Ann, are you there? Uh-huh. You sound tired. What's wrong? We're getting by, you know, a nickel a word. And how is the book coming? Have you seen a lawyer yet? Ann, you believe me, right? You know I'm not capable of these things I say I did. It's important to me that my friends believe. the book. Okay. One word, contract. Uh, two words, binding contract. 
No, Joe, everything's changed. Yeah, I know, for the better. I mean, Anne, how great is this? What, that a friend of mine's probably a mass murderer? It's paradise. Oh, the opportunity to, to write something with this kind of angle. Little did she know that the prime suspect in a series of brutal murders would turn out to be her good friend. It's never been done. Yeah, it's exploitative. That's why it's never been done. You're damn right it is, and it's going to make your career. <sighs> okay. You want to keep writing these piss-poor detective rags, scraping to get by? Not the point. You want to send Leslie to college? Not the point. Are you hustling them for a bigger advance? No, no because I just, it's, it's I don't a good what, tactic. No, I mean, I that I can understand. I'm scared, all right? I'm scared. I know. But, Anne, you are the only person in the world who can write this book. And if you don't, I can goddamn guarantee you, you are going to regret it. Since Bundy's arrest in Utah, we've been able to focus our investigation here in Seattle. Four people have identified him as being at the racket club on the day Ashley George disappeared. Now, after the abductions, Bundy missed three days of work. And he lived within a mile of at least four of the missing girls. And on top of that, his credit card was used on the same days and in the same areas where the girls vanished. Any questions? Let's get to work. How did I miss this? He did everything but confess to me. Nothing will happen to Leslie. I mean, he, he made a promise only the killer could keep. Anne, you brought Ted up. I was the one who said you'd never know I a guy like this. I should have seen it coming. I should have, some signals, some. No, no, that's crap. I mean, how, women's intuition? Not funny. I'm serious. How the hell else could you have known? I just, I still can't believe it. I need to understand how this could happen. Don't go down that road. I can tell you the things I told the police. I don't print anything till the trial's over. Do you believe it? The things they say he did? It's hard to picture. The Ted we know. I wanted to marry him. Even when things started to go strange, I... I was still hoping. Strange. Found a lug wrench taped under the seat of his car. A meat cleaver. Um, he took it to Utah with him. When did you notice this? When the girls started disappearing. He, uh, read everything and he... He watched the news all the time. I told him, people are really going to think you're the killer. So you called the police? I don't know why I did that. Oh, you were scared. It made no difference. They didn't arrest him. They can't arrest him without something more concrete. Maybe they can't arrest him because he didn't do it. Did you ever think of that? What made you call the police, Margo? He, um, went cold. Physically, you know. He, um, wouldn't have sex unless, yeah, he was choking me or tying me up. He wouldn't touch me. I, I don't think that he could. Maybe he's not interested in a girl unless she's dead. Hello? Yeah, it's me, Ted. I made bail. I'm back in Seattle. Where are you? I mean, where are you staying? With Margot. Really? Uh-huh. We had a we had a long talk. The guy's in town three minutes. He's back living with the first woman who's suspected and about to have lunch with the second. That's not going to hurt me, Dick. He's a friggin' Svengali. What makes you think he's not gonna hurt you? You guys have him under surveillance. What can he do? It's a bad idea, Anne. I heard you before. Well, I'll say it again. It's a bad idea. You think you're gonna figure out what makes this guy tick? That's horseshit. It ain't gonna happen. I'll tell you when and where. Well, I'd lock the sick son of a bitch up, but we haven't got enough evidence to give the guy a goddamn parking ticket. Bye. Well, leave your dental records with the desk sergeant. I'm telling you, Anne, you don't know what freedom is until they take it away from you. Oh, you, 
You're under surveillance. How freaking that feel? Oh, Keystone Cops. I take a few turns down an alley and they're lost. I shook a couple of them in a bookstore on the way here. Look, Ann, this case in Utah is gonna blow over. I learned enough in one semester at law school to torpedo the prosecution. And this woman, this Julie Wyatt woman, she's got skeletons to spare. I'm gonna hire a private detective. And he's gonna prove that she knows her attacker and she's covering for him. I heard the Utah case was strong. Well, that's because you're listening to your friends in the Seattle PD. They think I did it. Yeah, they do. Do you think I'm guilty? Let's just say I'm not convinced of your innocence. It's okay. I don't mind. Your book is gonna be a real murder mystery now, isn't it? Suspects, red herrings. This could be great for you, though. You must have questions for me. About my past, writer-type stuff. Okay. Um, your childhood, was it happy? All American. I even had a paper route. Did your father beat you? Never knew my father. My mom raised me on her own. Maybe that's why I like you so much. Single parent, just like her. Must have been lonely for you. Yeah. Grandparents helped. Especially my grandfather. I had an active, uh, active fantasy life. Sorry to keep you waiting. Oh, I, I think we need a few minutes. Wait a minute. Are you Ted Bundy? Yeah, 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 I am. I'm sorry, Mr. Bundy, but can I have your autograph? Well, sure. Um. Uh, thank you. You want one too, Ann? Might be worth something someday. Thanks. I'll be back. It'll be worth more if they execute you. I am gonna beat this. I have an airtight case. I'm gonna go back to Utah, and in a month, this whole nightmare is gonna be over with. And on the charge of aggravated kidnapping, the state of Utah finds the defendant, Theodore Robert Bundy, guilty as charged. We've, we've been writing. He's really getting a raw deal, huh? You could say that. Listen, um, will you do me a favor when you see him? Will you tell him he's too thin? I mean, he hasn't been eating enough, and I'm just, I'm really worried about his health. Yeah, I'll bake him some cookies. I'll see you. See you later, okay? Bye. And by giving me one to 15 years, it shows the judge didn't really think I was guilty. He succumbed to the pressure to convict. It's like parking tickets. They have a, they have a quota to fill. Now, I'm going to file an appeal. There are dead women in Colorado. I had nothing to do with that. They're charging you with murder. Extradition's begun. I spoke to the people in Colorado. They have no claim on me. They have credit card slips. They can put you there. Same town, same days as the murders. Well, that's not against the law, Anne. To be in Colorado. They found the victim's hair fibers in your car. I know what you're wondering. You're wondering if the sacrifice of life was worth it. Well, Anne, I may be a candidate for rehabilitation, but not for what I've done, for what this system has done to me. I'm gonna write a book about it. Be a good companion piece to your book. We could write it together. You're not gonna write a book. Did I tell you Gary Gilmore's in here? Norman Mailer's writing a book about him. Gary Gilmore's in death row. Let me tell you something about Gilmore. He's bad news, Anne. The things he did, the way he manipulated his girlfriend, well, it's tragic. He disgusts me. He, he, he is the kind of person, Anne, that should be in here, not me. There is a ghoul out there butchering women. But do they get the right guy? No, no, they take the first person they see, me. They put me in jail, they lock me up, they call me crazy. is a monster on the loose. He's killing with impunity, and nobody is going to stop him because they think I did it. I am not crazy. The system is crazy. 
and locking me up. That's not justice. It's madness. It's madness. So why are you here, Anne? Well, I feel guilty. Regarding what? What I do, how I make a living. Do you think you're normal? None of us is normal, Doctor. Do you think your childhood was normal? As normal as yours? You're a writer. How does that invoke a guilt response? I write about people who've endured unimaginable horrors. I feed off of that. Off of them. Like a vulture. Why do you choose to do it? Their stories deserve to be told. Someone has to speak for them. That's my job. You could find another. No. I'd miss it. The writing or crime. I'm fascinated with how a seemingly normal person can become a killer. I like to perform what I call psychological autopsies. I want to figure out how they got that way. Your grandfather was a very dangerous man, was he not? We've been doing our homework, haven't we? Which of my relatives is loquacious? Well, I'm not at liberty to... Uh... That was a rhetorical question, Doctor. Your attempts to pigeonhole me are demeaning to both of us. My current assignment. I personally know the subject. Yes, you mentioned that on the phone. If I'd seen the signs, paid more attention, things would be different. You mean that some of them would still be alive? Do you feel, um, happiness? All the time. Do you feel pain? When I'm hurting. What causes you to hurt? I don't like being humiliated. Who humiliated you? Doesn't matter. People. Did anyone else see the signs and stop them? No. So why should you have? I was a police officer. <laughs> I supposedly uh, have skills that others don't. Let me ask you, are you God? No. Then why are you assuming so much responsibility? The victims. I just can't get their faces out of my head. You're being extradited to Colorado. Your murder trial starts soon. Are you... Concerned. I'll be representing myself. You'll be in control. Mm. Does that make you feel like God? <laughs> I feel capable of a miracle or two. He cut through the goddamn ceiling tile. He just squeezed right up through it. Stopped eating it until he could fit. I can't believe he escaped. Do they have any leads? Mm -mm. He faked being sick. Skip dinner. They found him gone at breakfast. It's a 14-hour lead time. Yeah. He'll be anywhere by now. It has been six days since suspected mass murderer Theodore Robert Bundy escaped custody from his Colorado jail cell. Authorities are baffled as to his whereabouts. Bundy is considered armed and extremely dangerous. In local weather, Tallahassee can look forward to partly cloudy conditions continuing. Chris Hagen. I'm Chris Hagen. My name is Chris Hagen. Nice to meet you. I only have the first month's rent. But I promise, in three months, I'll have it all. Oh, I moved here to be next to the water. I love the water. Yeah, I grew up near the water. I find it, uh, I find it. I find it calming.
me tomorrow. Okay. Car, sir. I'm not going to ask you twice. Do you know who I am? Get out of the car, sir. Let me see your hands. Come on. on the roof. Florida, Sigma Theta sorority. While they were sleeping, two girls were beaten with a flashlight. And they survived. Two others didn't. They were beaten and mutilated. He's making it up as he goes now. And while the police were at the sorority house, he goes down the street and attacks another girl. No, no, this doesn't make sense. This doesn't fit his MO at all. Before, it was all planned, deliberate. Something's changed. Something's changed, Ann. He's still a monster. What do we have here? Let's see. Oh, I see. It looks like an indictment. Must be an election year. Why don't you read it to me? No, please. Why don't you read it to me? <clears throat> the state of Florida hereby proclaims that Theodore Robert Bundy, on the night of January 14th, 1978, unlawfully killed a human being, Ellen Glazer, by strangling and or beating her until she was dead. He said he was going to get me. Now he has an indictment. I guess that's about all he's gonna get. And the said Theodore Robert Bundy unlawfully killed a human being to wit Stacy Hunter by strangling and beating her until she was dead. We've displayed the prisoner now. I think it's my turn. He's been talking for six months while I've been gagged. Well, I will plead not guilty right now. <laughs> when they leave the lights on all night long. You know, and even if they didn't, I couldn't sleep because, uh, because it's cold. It's freezing in here. Am I supposed to feel sorry for you? No, 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 no. There's nothing wrong with my life that reincarnation couldn't fix. You know, they let me out for the first time in months the other day, and two armed guards and three attack dogs watch me exercise. I, it's, I, I don't know what they think I am, the bionic man. You have escaped before. And now I am a cause celeb. Yeah, this, this whole sorority situation is bizarre, isn't it? I mean, think of it. The combination of my name with a case like this is going to keep me in the limelight for a long, long time. There's a rumor going around the press pool. Press? Is that what you are now? Your press? The cops say that you saw a priest. Well, I have always been fascinated with Catholicism. Did you confess to him? And the father took my confession. 
And I said a few Hail Marys. That's not what I mean, you know. That's not what I mean. Anne, I can't confess to something I did not do. If you're not going to be truthful with me, I'm not going to just sit here and feed your fantasy. You need an ending. No, I need you to own you this. You are here because you need an ending. Now give it to me. Patience, Anne. I have a lot of show left in me. I'll give you an ending. I'll give you a bestseller. Counsel, are you ready for opening statements? Your Honor, we'd like a 24-hour continuance. Sorry, Ms. Neal, we will begin today. Then you'll start without me, Your Honor. Well, bless your heart, Mr. Bundy. I hope you stay with us. If you don't, we will miss you. But then all these people won't pay their good money to come see me. <laughs> Just take a seat, young man. Officer, can you tell us anything more about the crime scene? Anything? Anything unusual? Well, there was a considerable amount of blood, not just on the bed, but the entire room. He's enjoying this. He gets to play lawyer today. Uh, the condition of Stacy Hunter's body. She was lying face down. Her eyes and her mouth were open. There was a nylon stocking knotted around her neck. Her head was bloated, discolored. Did you touch anything in, uh, in either of the rooms? I may have. So you tampered with the crime scene. Objection. I object to his objection, Your Honor. <laughs> He's got a little fan club. Please refrain from doing my job. I mean, this is not a slam dunk. They've got almost no physical evidence. The eyewitness barely got a glimpse of him. I mean, if they don't put Bundy at the scene, he could walk. He could be sent back and tried in, in Colorado. No, I want the son of a bitch in Washington State. You know what's it about Mr. Bundy's little women? You know what his last job's gonna be in jail? Conductor. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's just the beginning. Look, I gotta get out of here for a while. Kelly. Hey, Kelly. And rules? I'm just helping him out any way that I can. I mean, I didn't know anything about law before I met Ted. Did, did you know he was going to be a lawyer? Yes. Yes, I remember. Since the trial began, I haven't been able to see him. How is he? Oh, he's, he's terrific. I mean, I think all this adversity is it's just making him stronger. <laughs> you know, I actually think that the other prisoners enjoy seeing a, a once Republican white middle class guy attack the system. He's going to beat this. Kelly, have you ever considered that Ted might be guilty? No. There's no question in my mind. Ted did not do this. There is evidence against him in four states. No way. Not my Ted. Not my bunny. Bunny? And you know him. He's not evil. He's good, and he's, he's kind, and he's loyal. Your Honor, these images are inflammatory and of no probative value. Now, don't shake your finger at me, young man. That's better. You could shake that finger at your lawyer. Overruled. How would you describe the wounds we see here? As bite marks. The clearest examples taken from the buttocks of Miss Glazer, is this correct? Yes, sir. And how would you compare the bite marks from the victim to those of the defendant? Theodore Bundy. Your Honor, I'm very sorry, but I cannot let this continue. Well, object, object, Mr. Bundy, but don't assume that you can set the rules in this court. I object. Bless your heart, but I'm going to overrule again. Continue. How do the bite marks on the victim compare to the teeth of the defendant, Mr. Bundy? They are identical to the dental impressions taken from the defendant. Are we in a ballroom, Your Honor? Are we dancing a, a minuet? <laughs> well, you are leading the witness, Mr. Baines. Objection sustained. I'll rephrase. In your opinion, who made the bite marks on the victim's buttocks? The defendant, Theodore Bundy. Oh, yeah. Thank you. No further questions, Your Honor. Your Honor, I object. They did it. 
They put him at prosecution the Prosecution contends that the killer had a chip on his incisor. I contend that my tooth wasn't chipped prior to my arrest. The court has already ruled on this, Mr. Butler. Your Honor, if you would allow me to introduce evidence with regard to this, we could avoid this entire graphic sideshow. That's enough now, Mr. Butler. I have always contended, Your Honor, always from the beginning, that they have taken my teeth and they have twisted them every which way but loose to fit the evidence. Mr. Bundy, sit down. On the night of the Sigma Theta sorority murders, can you tell us where you were? Well, that was a year ago. And if I'm not mistaken, memory doesn't improve with time. Do you know where you were that night? If I was charged with a crime, you bet I would. Well, I'm not on trial for a bad memory. So, you have no alibi. It's safe to say what I was not doing that night. I was not performing open-heart surgery. I was not trekking in Timbuktu. And I certainly was not slaughtering young women. The jury's only been out a few hours. We could be here for days. Verdict's in. Hey, what's going on? Oh, my God. I already have a verdict. I, honey, I gotta go. I'll call you later. I love you. Bye. Will the defendant please rise? Bailiff, hand me the judgment. And I expect the courtroom to maintain its decorum regardless of the outcome. I will be reading the verdict for the jury. We, the jury, in the case of the state of Florida versus Theodore Robert Bundy on the charge of first degree murder, find the defendant guilty as charged. Victoria? I didn't want to talk to you. What changed your mind? The sentencing is next week. Everybody's talking about it. Ted told me that you were the love of his life, even after you ended it. Ted was in love. I wasn't. <sighs> We didn't have any contact for about three years, and then one day he called me out of the blue. Really? He never told me. He had completely transformed himself. He was so confident, so charismatic. He had become exactly the man that I thought that I wanted. And then he proposed. And? And I told him yes. I told him yes, and he stopped calling me and stopped returning my calls. When I finally got a hold of him and I asked him what was wrong, he said, I don't know what you're talking about. And he hung up. It must have been calculated. He planned it. Can you remember when this was? I know exactly. It was January 2nd, 1974. It was three days later. The first girl was attacked three days later. She looked like me. They all look like me. I know. I'm sorry. You know, it's always in the middle of the night. I wake up. And I wonder why he didn't kill me. Why? Should I feel guilty? No. No, it's not your fault. Don't blame yourself. But it started with me. No, I don't think. I think it started long before he met you. 
long before he met any of us. He said what? That his family was close, loving. I don't want you to go away thinking it was a house of horrors. But we had our secrets, Ted's mother especially. <laughs> we all do. Ted tell you he was illegitimate? No. Nobody told him either. He spent his first three months in an orphanage. When he was finally taken home, his grandparents stood in as mother and father. Ted grew up thinking his mother was his sister. When did he learn the truth? Not till he was almost 20. <laughs> That's a long time to hide it. <laughs> like I said, secrets. Tell me, does it shock you, the things that Ted's done? Ted's grandfather. He was a violent man. Ted had kind things to say about him. <laughs> he was the type who could swing a cat over his head by the tail and enjoy it. Leaves an impression. Know what I mean? Did you ever see that kind of violence in Ted? No. No, I never saw it. But I... There was a little girl who went missing in 62. Her name was Sarah Jane Sweeney. She just vanished. Her house was on Ted's paper loop. Could you explain for us how you met the defendant? Uh, me. We, we met in Olympia, Washington, and became friends. And then several years later, our relationship evolved into a more romantic sort of thing. And is it, uh, would you say it's serious? Serious enough that I want to marry him. Have you ever seen or even known Ted Bundy to behave violently? No, never. And I have been associated with Mr. Bundy in virtually every circumstance. He is a warm, kind, patient man. Do you want to uh, marry... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. Uh, will you marry me? Yes. <laughs> yes, I will. Then I do hereby marry you. Okay, Mr. Bundy. Mr. Bundy, you can stop a little Valentine charade right now. I'm married him. Florida law says if you phrase a proposal just so in a court of law in front of a judge, it's binding. Ted Bundy just got married. Hey. Hey. Oh, what's gonna happen next, Ted? Uh, it's okay. We did it, didn't we, baby? We're gonna get through it. I know, Bunny. For better or for worse, right? That's my girl. I went and bought myself a ring at the pawn shop down the street. <laughs> I guess that makes this our, uh, our wedding night, doesn't it? Ted, the guys are going to see us, don't No, they won't. They won't see us. I won the lottery. What are you talking about? All of us on the cell block, we put five dollars in. When the pot gets up to a hundred, we draw lots. The winner gets 20 minutes. Really? Mm-hmm. And, um, I guess that you are the winner, huh? Bingo. I find it absurd to ask for mercy for something I didn't do. I sympathize with the families of the young women who died. But I am telling this court, if I had had competent counsel, I would be acquitted. Because I am not, I am not, I am not the one responsible for the reprehensible actions at the Sigma Theta sorority. And yet, I know I will be sentenced. But it is not me that you sentence. It is a sentence on someone, or someone else, who is not standing here before you. 
Theodore Robert Bundy having been adjudicated guilty on the charge of murder in the first degree, it is the order of this court that you be put to death by a current of electricity, that the current be passed through your body until you are dead. You take care of yourself, young man. I say that sincerely. It is a tragedy to see such a total waste of humanity. You're a bright young man. You'd have made a good lawyer. I would have loved to have you practice in front of me, but you went another way, partner. I don't have any animosity toward you. I want you to know that. Thank you, sir. Bailiffs. Congratulations, man. Yeah, thanks, DJ. We're gonna get this thing overturned. I'm telling you, the Supreme Court should be looking at the legality of this evidence, and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be out of here. Oh, Ted, the baby. <laughs> yeah, it's great, isn't it? I'm gonna live forever. How do I look? Thin. Planning another escape? <laughs> no, no. I'm a vegetarian now. It's a slimming diet. The Florida state prisons don't cater to special diet requests, you know, unless it's a religious thing. So I, uh, I converted to Hinduism. You think I look too thin? You look fine. Yeah, well, I'll be in perfect health when they kill me. <laughs> you should put that in your book. I don't want to talk about the book. You come here as a friend? I want to know when it began. There are no answers. Did it start with Sarah Jane Sweeney? She was a sweet kid. She used to follow me around like a puppy dog. But I'm afraid back then I was just a a normal 14-year-old boy. You remember exactly how old you were when she disappeared? Well, it was big news in our neighborhood. I found out about your childhood. You mean about my mother passing herself off as my sister? How do you feel being lied to? Adopted children are lied to. It doesn't make them killers. Was it your grandfather then? What do you want me to do? Anne, you want me to make up something? No. Because I'll do that. I'll make up something. Okay, my grandfather raped my mother and created a monster. Is that what you want to hear? I want to understand it. It? You mean me, don't you? I'm less of a threat that way, aren't I? If I'm something else? I'm not like you, then I'm demented. I have some defect. You do have a defect. I do not. I do not. I can't tell you the truth, Anne, because there is no truth to tell. 99% of tell the Tell me you did it. Give me that. 99% of the time, I'm just like anyone else, like you, but still. Say you killed them. Still, you judge me. You who have known me so long. Show me the 1%. Show me what they saw. Why do you judge me so harshly? Even begin to answer that. I'll never stop. Do you remember Long Tall Sally? Uh, the crisis claimed the girl you saved. Her name wasn't Sally. I tracked down the, the medical workers who helped her that night. 
I got her address and her real name. Dad. A year later, almost to the day, she slit her wrists and bled to death in her bathtub. And I had to wonder, what good did I do that night? Huh? What do you think? Goodbye, Ted. I didn't do any good. Is there any such thing? Is there? haven't been found yet. I can provide information. I want you to go to these people. I want you to tell them that I am willing to talk, that I can tell them where they can find their daughters. But they have to ask the governor for clemency. What are you saying? You know where these girls are. I can speculate. Oh, my God. Sweet, I can Say goodbye to Daddy. No, stop it! Listen to me. I need you to do this for me. I can't do this anymore, Dad. Yes, you can. If I can do it, you can do it. I'm counting on you. I know, I know, I've heard. Every reporter in the country is called. No, it's his uh, fourth death warrant. Hey, can you now hang on a minute? I got a call coming. Hello? Yes, this is she. No, I'm, I'm so sorry, I can't. I'm doing Larry King then. Can, can I call you back? Thanks. Hello? All right, here's my proposal. Three more years. I get three more years, and I will tell you where the bodies are buried, and also about the girl's last moments on Earth. I mean, that ought to be some comfort to the families. Ed, we spoke to the families. They refused to intervene on your behalf. The execution has not been staged. You have to do something, okay? You have to do something. Have you called all the families? I mean, you're certain you've called all of them? They, they have to want to know. You could give this information without asking for something in return. Why won't these people help? Huh? Why won't they help? Well, you heard about his last minute offer, right? Yeah. These guys got a hell of a, a lot of nerve. That's well, a confession. Think about it. I mean, that alone provides a tremendous amount of closure for hundreds of people. Yeah, that's one way to look at it. Hey. Will you remember to tell my family? Tell them I'm sorry. Maybe we can start by telling me a little bit about the girl. The little girl's name was Sarah Jane Sweeney. She vanished from her home in March 1961. Ted was a paper boy, and the Sweeney home was on his route. One day, Sarah Jane stayed home from school sick. Her mother thought she was asleep, but when she went upstairs to check on her, Sarah Jane was gone. She just disappeared. They never found her body. Do you think she was his first victim? Ted denies it. Yes. Yes, I think she was his first.
She was eight, he was 14. How do you feel right now, Anne? Has justice been done? Oh, you can never write what Ted's done. Yeah, surely his death must be some consolation to the victim's families. a suspect in 36 murders. You know what Ted said? Add a digit. <laughs> what does that mean, add a digit? 37 murders? Or is it 136? Did it start with Sarah Jean? Did it start after? Was Ted born a monster? Did he become one? There is no answer. the only truth Ted ever gave me. We think we know evil when we see it. But we don't. It just exists. And we don't know why. 